I'm getting an IUD tomorrow. And even though I have placed hundreds of them in other women, I am a little bit stressed out about it because I have sympathy sweats literally every time I do it because I had an IUD at 25 that was excruciatingly painful to have placed. So today I'm gonna to talk about everything I'm going to do to make this a significantly more comfortable experience. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom. And I know you're probably thinking, Jess, you went through infertility. You had to do IVF to get pregnant. Why are you getting an IUD? And it is probably silly. I probably do not need an IUD. However, my last birth was really, really hard and I'm still recovering. I'm almost 11 weeks postpartum and I'm still having vulvar pain. Um, so I just don't want to be pregnant even by accident. I also have embryos on ice that I feel strongly about going back for and I would, I would not be thrilled with a surprise pregnancy at this point. So just for peace of mind, I am going to get an IUD. When I had an IUD placed at 25, I had never had a baby. And honestly, that is the best thing to make an IUD more comfortable is, is have a baby first. Once a baby has come through your cervix, it's just a lot easier. Um, when you've never had a baby, your cervix is really hard and tight and firm. And then once you've had a baby, it's always kind of like floppy and open a little bit. And so part of uh, what was painful for me with my first IUD insertion was just having things go through my cervix into my uterus, including a uterine sound, which most midwives or OBGYNs or healthcare providers will use just to check how far into the uterus, they need to put the IUD. So if you can see, there's centimeter markings on this and they slide it through the cervix. And then when it bumps the back of the uterus, that can cause a pretty good cramp, but then you know how far in to put an IUD. I found this absolutely excruciating when I had my first IUD. This is also the same thing they use though for a mock embryo transfer for IVF. And when I had my mock embryo transfer, didn't even feel it. And I'd had a baby at that point. I am going to make sure that I take 800 milligrams of ibuprofen about an hour before I go in for my IUD just to help with the cramping. I'm also going to take 10 milligrams of diazepam, which is also known as Valium for anxiety. And yes, that is a high dose. A lot of women would probably be fine with just five milligrams, but I think this is one of those situations where I've previously had a traumatic experience and as a midwife, I just know too much and I, I need the bigger dose. I do have to have a driver because I'm going to take that medication. Um, and a lot of women might not want to take it if they're breastfeeding. I am breastfeeding my son, um, but it's just a one-time dose. I'm going to keep a real close eye on him tomorrow. I'm also thinking I might pump and then mix that milk with milk from when I pumped when I didn't have diazepam on board. The concentration of diazepam into breast milk is at about 11% of the maternal concentration. And medications are usually considered safe for breastfeeding if it's 10% or less in the breast milk. So it's just right above that threshold. But again, I, I'm not going to be taking it over and over and over again. This is a one-time thing. If I had never had a baby, I would also ask for a medication called misoprostol. Misoprostol is a medication that will soften and open the cervix a little bit. And I find when I try to place IUDs in women who have never had babies, if I can't get it in and they didn't come to me for like an IUD consult ahead of time, like I'm just placing it the first time I meet them. Um, if I can't get it in, then a lot of times I'll have them come back with misoprostol on board and make sure that they're on their period. And you might think that's kind of weird or gross, but it's so much easier to get an IUD into someone um, when they're menstruating. When I was in midwifery school, I was taught that lidocaine spray on the cervix doesn't make a difference. And then after having multiple infertility procedures done, both with and without lidocaine spray on my cervix, I absolutely feel like it makes a difference. So I use it for everyone who doesn't have a lidocaine allergy when I place an IUD. It does not get rid of all of the discomfort, but I think it helps take some of that sting and, and um, pain out of the equation. Even though my IUD was really, really painful last time, I did like having it just because once it's in, you can't screw it up. It is a really effective form of birth control. It's the most um, commonly used birth control by female healthcare providers. So I think that says a lot. And I just, I just don't want to be stressed about a, a surprise pregnancy. In the past, I would have said, oh, I'd be thrilled to be surprise pregnant. And after my last birth, I do not feel that way anymore. Because I'm going to get a Mirena IUD, I also get the added benefit of not having a period. And that was a big regret that I had last time too, because um, I hadn't had a baby. I decided that I needed a Skyla IUD, which is like a millimeter smaller. It is really not a huge difference, um, which has less hormones, which I thought, oh, that's great. I'll still have a period and that'll be wonderful. And I don't know why I was thinking that, but um, I did still have a period with the Skyla but it came in the form of spotting for 14 days out of the month. And that was a giant pain in my butt. 
And I will say too, that whenever patients come to me um, for an IUD and they think they might want a Skyla because they've never had a baby, I always relay my terrible experience. And of course, I'm like, you know, you do you, don't let me tell you how to live your life. But um, it's build is better because it's smaller. But I mean, this is a Mirena. This is a Skyla. Or is it the other way around? No, it's the other way around. See, I, I, I couldn't even tell because they're virtually like, it's like a millimeter difference and you don't feel it once it's in your uterus anyway. And they have virtually the exact same insertion device. Like the, the pain is going to be the same during placement regardless. So um, I just think it's better to get a Mirena because you're less likely to have all of that weird funky spotting. And the Mirena is good for eight years if you want to keep it in, whereas Skyla is only good for three. The other nice thing about a Mirena IUD is that the hormones are localized to the uterus. So I really shouldn't have all over hormone effects like mood swings, weight gain, things like that. It shouldn't impact my milk supply. Um, of course, everyone's experience is different and you will read all sorts of stuff on the internet. Um, but overall, I place a lot of Mirena IUDs and I really don't get a lot of complaints about them. So we are on our way to the doctor's office. I had a good protein breakfast. I had protein waffles with peanut butter. That was a mistake I made last time as I went in on an empty stomach. Um, I took my ibuprofen, also a mistake I made last time. I did not take anything. Um, and I also took my diazepam, which has not kicked in yet, but hopefully will right about the time we're walking through the door. Um, so I will let you guys know how it goes. Hi, Pinky. <laughs> so it's about 6 p.m. I had my IUD appointment at 9.40 this morning, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I had a virtually pain-free IUD insertion. I, I am shocked. <laughs> Between the ibuprofen and the diazepam, I really just felt, um, you know, a little discomfort when the speculum was placed, as you do. Um, there's a device called a tenaculum that we use. Yes, honey. There's just a device called a tenaculum that we use for IUD insertions. Um, and I'm not going to show you what that looks like. It's up to you if you want to Google that. But it's a pretty barbaric clamp that we put on the cervix just to keep the cervix from moving around because the uterus is a mobile organ when we do IUD insertions. And that was absolutely excruciating when I had one placed prior to having had a baby for an IUD. But I will also say... I will also say when I had my first IUD placed, I didn't have any ibuprofen on board and that numbing spray, it just makes such a big difference. So if you don't have a lidocaine allergy, ask for the numbing spray for your IUD insertion. It just, it really takes the edge off. Um, and then after, after that was on, you know, very, very mild cramping. Um, but I didn't feel the sounding. I didn't even feel the IUD go in. The whole process took about three minutes. Um, and it was fine. And and also having a healthcare provider that you're comfortable with is just good healthcare providers are worth their weight in gold. So if if your provider does not want to write you a prescription for pain medication or anxiety medication for your IUD insertion, or they try to tell you, oh, numbing spray doesn't make a difference. I don't use that then find somebody else. Um, and, and that being said, you do have to have like a physical in-person appointment for a consult before you can get those medications. And that's a roadblock that I run into as a healthcare provider as I see a lot of women for the first time and they want an IUD that day. And if that's the case, like I don't have time to get you those medications um, and you can't call in and ask for those medications if I've never met you. Like I can't write a prescription for a controlled substance if I've never seen you in the office before. Um, so it does add an extra doctor's appointment, but honestly, I, I think it's worth it. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about IUDs, drop them in the comments. I am more than happy to answer them. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. There are about a hundred different postpartum topics that I want to do videos about, um, ranging from childhood vaccinations to cloth diapering. So if there are topics that you want to hear about, again, drop them in the comments. I am happy to make whatever you guys want to see. Thank you so much for watching.